Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tech Talk, um, a technology show where Amit and me, Rinat, we talk about various technology related topics. Uh, we usually cho choose the topics that are popular in current days and um, also the topics that our audience have uh, told us that they would like to understand more. Um, today's topic is a very interesting one. Uh, today, we're going to talk about UAV, which is unmanned aerial vehicles. Um, we also know a common type of UAV, which, which are dr drones. Um, although this is a physical, um, physical technology, um, a, a, a physical item that, um, you know, you, you, you go, that goes and um, flies in different areas, um, it still has a lot of technology, IT related technology that goes in, in, inside it. You know, the control that we, we have, how to control it in larger distance, the GPS uh, tracking, etc. So there are many, many um, um, technology or IT related um, uh, topics that goes in, into building or making and making a UAP work. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a good, good topic to um, talk about. Thank you very much, Amit, for coming up with it. Um, um, as as we are both mechanical engineers, we have some some understanding on the mechanics of of, of it as well. So we can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but yeah, it it it's it's a very um very exciting topic to talk about. Uh, so yeah, Amit, uh, what what's your thoughts on um, UAV? So UAV is uh, actually quite interesting, Renat, because um, I mean, and especially drones, because prior to uh, people having access to drones that they can simply buy and start using for capturing a lot of videos from different angles, uh, drones have been used by the commercial industry and especially military, um, where they have used it for reconnaissance missions and surveillance missions and even attack missions. Um, so yes, um, and when we talk about unmanned aerial vehicle, it's basically uh, a, an aircraft or something similar to an aircraft that is operated without uh, a pilot. Uh, in this case, it's a remote pilot. Um, so if you have a remote pilot who is operating the drone, uh, then that becomes an unmanned aerial vehicle. And the reason I selected this topic is because we keep seeing a lot of drones uh, being flown around um, these days. A lot of people are using those drones <laughs> for hobby, etc., um, etc. Et but um, I think it's a very important technology and we need to understand the various applications behind it. And as you rightly said, there are other uh, technologies that empower these uh, this this physical tool. So we, we can talk a bit about that as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, um, one of the one of the one of the fascinating areas of um, talking about UAV or even or drones is that um, I mean, obviously, you know, one sim one drone and how to control it. There is a lot of technology there already. But one of the things that really fascinates me is when you are controlling mon multiple drones. So and how multiple drones talk to each other. So this is a this is a new kind of um, area of technology where uh, multiple sort of automated agents like the drones, how can they be in sync with each other? So there could be there could be tasks or objectives that, for example, you know, if in, in the event of a fire, um, multiple drone can drop buckets of water. Um, and but they have to be in sync with each other. They have to know where all the you know just one drone isn't going to do it because you know you need con continuous supply of water and things like that. So um, there is a need for multiple drones working together, and they all need to know where all the remaining other drones are. Otherwise, they're going to run into each other because they have to go back and forth, back and forth in in a you know very quick manner. And um, for that, they need to know where all the rest of them are and, uh, you know, where the objective is and what they need to do. So um, synchronized uh, movement is also a, one of the, one of the, you know, uh, one of the advanced uh, things to sort of things that the scientists are working on, 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 on drones right now. 
Um, there have been a few TED talks as well, which I've seen where, um, you know, a number of drones working together and sort of creating, you know, cool, um, you know, with, with the LED lights carrying, uh, creating cool shapes and stuff on the sky. Um, it's even more exciting than watching fireworks. I mean, you know, thousands of drones are creating various um, various sort of artworks in, in, in the sky with LED lights, etc. So yeah, this is a very interesting topic. Um, and, um, you know, the, this, this part of where, you know, you have multiple drones networking with each other is also very interesting to me. Yes, absolutely. I think yes, I I think I've seen that TED talk as well, and um, it's I mean synchronized drone. Yes, it's a, it's a good concept, and I think because uh, given your RPA background, you might be already familiar with uh, robots uh, being controlled by a single tenant or something, because you can have multiple robots doing different things, but they are all controlled by a central system. So similarly, I'm guessing the same thing would apply to the robots as uh, the drones as well, where they are being controlled by a central system, but uh, they are all in sync and they are all sharing information uh, in real time uh, so that they don't uh, collide with each other. So yes, it's, it is it is uh, kind of interesting, but I think we need to first uh, start in uh, the basics of what a drone actually is and why it was, why it's needed, what are the applications because um, yeah, people use it to record videos and uh, take pictures, but are there any other benefits to a drone and why is it so important and what actually drives a drone? How does it fly, etc, etc. I think those are some of the things that we need to uh, think about because and, and that's one of the reasons I selected this topic because when we talk about drones, people just think about the toys that you can buy from a DJI Mavic which everyone is familiar. So normally you go and buy that, but no one is familiar with other drones. Yes, yes. So uh, the, yeah, there are many, many use cases of our drones. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the popular ones are the ones we know about taking uh, commercial videos and uh, things like that. But, uh, you know, as I've mentioned one of them, you know, in, in, in a situation of fire, um, the fire suppression is one of them. Um, there are many, many others, and we're going to look at all of them. But uh, yeah, let's let's start with the uh, actual um, the 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 mechanics of drone, or how you know, or or UAV in you know in in broader spectrum, um, to to see what are the main components of it, and then we can look at the use cases, and then we can look at what we, what is coming in future, etc. Yeah. So in terms it, of the main components, yeah, go on, Amit. So uh, I, I think uh, in terms of the main components, you always uh, think about what you see first uh, and what you see is the body of a drone. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are uh, familiar with two designs. One is a typical aircraft design um, or a glider design. Um, very lightweight, no cockpit because there is no pilot. And the other is uh, the, pro the, uh, the vertical takeoff and landing design where drones have propellers um, uh, vertically stacked, uh, three, four, verti uh, four propellers vertically stacked in the typical design um, and then they are used to uh, lift the aircraft and move it forward. So I think that's the, that's the first thing, the two different types of body types. One is vertical takeoff and landing and one is the normal aircraft. So those two designs, so that's what you see first. And then almost all drones have a camera to see um, for the pilot to see what the drone is seeing or where the drone is located and what's located beneath the drone. So you all have a camera. Then you need some sensors. So the sensors could be anything from a gyroscope to stabilize the aircraft uh, or the camera so that the camera doesn't move when the drone is flying and the image is very stable. Then you have some sensors to detect uh, the wind speed the pressure, the humidity, and um, maybe a compass, uh, a GPS. So those types of some sensors, even thermal sensors, to de to detect heat signatures. So so that's there. Uh, the camera can also be used to take uh, photographs uh, for uh, ground uh, or ground images, uh, etc. So you have the sensors, you have the body, and you have the camera. Uh, the next thing is you need uh, uh, the computer to do all the processing. 
So normally the computer is an onboard uh, system, uh, which is, it could be a Raspberry Pi or a processor on a motherboard. But normally people go for a, a very simple thing, a system on a chip or SOC or a whole uh, computer on a board like a Raspberry Pi. So you don't need any other external components. Everything is on a board. So so that's the main thing, which is the flight control system. So it will, it will tell the drone how to fly, when to fly based on all the measurements it's taking real time. And there are two types of measurements, external measurements and internal measurements. External measurements is the, the things that I can measure which are around me, surrounding me, or on outside the aircraft, just on the body. And internal measurements is how the how the thermals are managed, etc, etc. So once you have that, then you also need a battery. So because you need to power the circuits and all, all the other things. Uh, if it's a big drone, which is which has to travel, say, hundreds of kilometers, not thousands, but maybe hundreds of kilometers, it needs a different kind of a supply. So normally you have a lithium polymer batteries, not a lithium ion batteries. And um, apart from that, you can have a normal fuel, fuel based uh, hydrogen fuel cells, etc. as a battery to power the drone. And, and the last thing is the radio component. The radio component is to communicate all the data with the pilot. Without that, uh, the pilot cannot send instructions to the drone and drone cannot send live view to the pilot for their controller. So all these things, because a drone itself is meaningless without the remote control, because drones have to be piloted remotely. So without the remote control, yeah. the drone is, <coughs> the unmanned aerial vehicle is meaningless. So it has to be an unmanned aerial system, aircraft system, which has the remote and the drone together with the power source, camera, sensors, everything. And uh, and we need to consider two different scenarios. One is the pilot can see the drone. So it, it's in the line of sight. And the other is the pilot cannot see the drone. It is outside the line of sight. It's about 10 tens of kilometers or behind a hill and they still need to operate so so you have to consider all these things so this these these are the basic components for a drone which are actually important uh, for anyone to start uh, building them because you can buy any of these from the market uh, if, if you are designing the simple drone that you can see uh, currently you can design your own you can buy a simple computer like a raspberry pi put it on a board, get the small motors, buy some fans and just power them. And all, all you need is a software, the flight control software. And that software is all open source these days. So you can download it free of cost, modify mm -hmm. it based on your design and then start uh, using your own drone. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, building your own drone is, is, a, very, is a very um, cool project to do. I mean, many people have done it and there are many videos of, in YouTube, uh, you know, tracking the you know, people who has done it. Um, you know, you can buy all of the separate components and the software is available in different versions of software. It's very readily available on the internet um, for free. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, creating a drone is, is a very, um, very cool project to do. And yeah, you could, you could actually think about different designs. I mean, right now we have this popular design of four uh, fans or propellers, as we put it, um, in, in the four sides. But you, you know, you might come up with different designs which are more efficient um, or it, it, it requires less amount of fans to do the same kind of movement, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, definitely it's a cool project to do. And um, yeah, I mean, audience, if, if, uh, if, if you guys are, um, um, interested? Yeah, go for it. Build, build one, uh, build a um, drone for yourself. Uh, use Raspberry Pi. I mean, I've 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 had Raspberry Pis uh, to do uh, separate other projects, and um, it is very easy to use. It has all the required connections and everything. Um, it is easier than um, using another different kind of chip. So, and a, a lot of softwares are made for Raspberry Pi. You just have to load it and ready to go. So. Uh, that's uh, that's one of the you know if, if you didn't want to do a lot of work with the software side of things you know raspberry pi is probably the best bet to go to go with um 
Yeah, I mean uh, the, the uh, other bit uh, I wanted to say because you talked about the design and that design is actually quite important because you said yes, people can come up with better designs, more efficient designs. And if you look mm-hmm. at the propeller design, it's actually quite inefficient because you waste a lot of power moving the fans. Uh, mm-hmm. If you look at a wing-based design, the wing-based design that you have in most aircrafts has been the most popular and successful one, ones for long-distance mm-hmm. flights, because uh, once you take off, uh, then you can almost glide in the air as long as there is some wind. So all you need is some propeller to power you, and uh, it's it's a very simple uh, basic design. If you have if you use light wind materials, with the motor, of course, you tend to uh, burn the energy quite quickly from the batteries so so people are looking at wing based designs which are quite popular so yes drones uh, as a, as a whole is a quite a unique uh, tool to do a lot of things and uh, when we talk about drones it's um, it's not just about like taking images just for the sake of taking i mean a lot of hobbyist uh, youtube uh, vloggers and everyone they take videos using drones uh, drones have now been uh, drones have now been used in hollywood films bollywood films youtube uh, uh, films uh, shorts films etc uh, because it's very easy lightweight people can just take it and they can see what's happening it has got a high definition camera so it records a good quality video um, and uh, you can you can go close, you can go far, you can go on the top, you can glide, you can do lots of different angles uh, without using a b- very big rig or a setup, camera setup. But uh, the traditional applications uh, everyone is aware of, but can you think of any other applications of drone, Renat? Well, to be honest, there are many, um, many other sort of commercial applications. I mean, obviously, <laughs> Amazon is trying out to uh, deliver packages with, with drones. Uh, uh, there could be food delivery with drones, um, you know, all, all these other. Um, um, so if, if you require, I mean, the, the benefit of drones is that it's, it's a physical object and, and it's, it's being controlled by computer. So um you could automate um, the activities of drones and anything anywhere you need to move things physically i, I think you can you, you can you can create a 3d printer <laughs> uh, so you can create a drone based 3d printer i don't think this has happened before but it's possible so if you wanted to you know 3d printer what it does is obviously it melts the object and then put it puts it in everywhere but a drone could be Putting the I just say for example you want to build an accommodation a house, you know all the individual pieces needs to be put in the bricks and stuff. A drone, you know, like ten different, you know, a hundred drones can be doing all of these works, and then it could be it could be building the house quicker than it, than it, than even a three D printer. So there are many ways of using these the drones. I mean, obviously we, we talked about two of the important ones, you know, in fire suppression. I mean, when when if there is an event of fire. We can we can um, get some help there, or um, in in one of the other places, which obviously unfortunately being used is uh, in wars. Um, um, you know the the um, technologically advanced countries are sending um, drones to to well for to to gather information as well as actual um, actual activities of war which um yeah <laughs> which is quite sad because obviously the 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 countries who are not technologically advanced like that they are having to have humans risk their lives while you know the countries who are using drones are just um you know using drones and no no human life is being risked so uh yeah it is um i mean i, I don't personally support any activity to do with war but um it is it, yeah, drones are being used in, in this way as well i mean yes war yes that's a that's a very um yeah i mean it's a sad use case but uh, mm-hmm. military technologies are not just used for wars but they are also used for many other purposes because uh, you can use drones for surveillance so suppose you want to monitor someone from a very high distance it it could be it could be because some terrorist activities going on so the drones yeah. are very helpful there so that's surveillance then you have a reconnaissance mission so before you send human beings to um, do something say on a mission 
So you can use a drone to survey the area before, get the information to the humans, and then the humans can then go to that area because they now have all the visual information about that place. So that's a reconnaissance. Then you also have the astro imaging, um, or not astro imaging, earth imaging. So you can fly a drone over an agricultural field. Say you want to monitor wine farms, huge wine farms, mm. and I don't want to go myself, go there physically and see all the things. So what I do is I, I take the drone, I go through all the farms, take f take videos, send it back, and then I, I view, okay, where was this taken, what was the time, and how how what is the how are my crops looking? So that's another application, which is actually quite useful because farmers now don't have to go to big huge farms physically. They can just send a drone, take pictures, videos, and then they can view it on the computers and then decide whether they have to actually go to fix something or not. The other use case is deliveries, Amazon deliveries. Very true, very, very true. Because it's not just for Amazon deliveries. It could be delivery for anything, pick up, drop, uh, anything. Um, I, I saw a video where they were using drones to deliver uh, blood to remote hospitals. Hmm. So suppose you are in a uh, location where you they can't send a um, aircraft because it doesn't have a, a runway. See, the challenge with uh, most of the big aircrafts is they also require uh, runways to take mm -hmm. off and land. But with a drone, it can just land in a very limited small space, even on people's roofs. Mm -hmm. So with drone now, so suppose you have a shortage. Um, so in, in UK, you have small GPs and then you have big hospitals. And in a lot of other, uh, other countries, you have a small clinic or a local hospital, and then you have a central or a big hospital in a city. And sometimes the city and the village is uh, far away and you cannot send all the supplies quickly. And 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 if you have if you don't have roads and if you have a big river or if you have some other issues, then sending those supplies becomes very difficult. So suppose um, you can send blood uh, frozen um, in a in a drone and drop it in a, in a over a clinic. The clinic can then use that blood to provide blood to an injured person. So that's a very useful use case, and it is also it can also be used for. Uh, search and rescue missions where people want to see what the damage is then what tools to take before they actually go so th those kind of uh, d delivery th this is uh, again quite important and then of course I talked about filmmaking so you can take drones shoot them from various angles no need of rigs uh, and uh, drones can then uh, people are using now for drone racing so instead of racing in a car, now people race uh, drones. So they have a typical uh, route which they have to uh, fly through um, in a certain uh, num in a, in a few seconds or whatever. And uh, yeah, whoever wins uh, takes the prize. So drone races are now quite popular. And drone racing is actually combined with VR headsets because if if you want to see what the drone is seeing quickly. Uh, you yeah. normally wear a VR headset so that you can see real time and you can navigate as if you are a pilot sitting inside yes. the drone. So it, 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 so these are so many cool applications that, uh, I mean, I have read about it, I've, I've seen <coughs> videos and I feel that it's, that, that's why I thought of uh, like sharing it with people and discussing this topic. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, when, when you combine a number of technology, that, that becomes so much more powerful. Yes, I mean, in, as you said, in, 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 in drones, you can have cameras which are 360 cameras. So it's looking at the whole surrounding in one go. And then if the whole information is passed onto the base computer in real time, you actually can be as if you are um, present in, in, inside that drone. And that is so much powerful because if, even though it's unmanned, you would get all the information as if it was a manned. Um, it's not unmanned aerial vehicle anymore. It's just, you know it's a manned vehicle, and um, all the information and all the control, um, you know, based on reaction of what you're seeing, everything will be done the same way. But yeah, um, yeah, as you said, the use cases are are you know are limitless because there are in anything anywhere you need to do any kind of physical movement can be done with now drones uh, farming and all kinds of um, um, any anything that needs physical movement and drones sort of um, opens um, another spectrum of abilities because you know you could create robots which does human human tasks 
um, you know, even farming and all the other kinds of various kinds of robots. But robots are not able to fly, um, but drones are. And drones, um, if you can fly, then you don't have to. You can just fly on, 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 on like a human height level and do the, um, do the things that the, that robot would do without having to fly. But if you want, you can then fly and do many other extra activities that you didn't even think about. Um, so yeah, I mean, for example, you know, film producers didn't think about drone and you know, the need for drone, but when it was discovered, you know, sort of when, when drone was created, it was seen that, okay, it, this would create, this would help create so many good uh, footages and then, okay, then film producers started using it. So yeah, many, many use cases were, came after once the technology enabled, you know, added the camera and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's very interesting use cases. And um, I, I think there, there are many other use cases that we didn't even think about. And, um, you know, another degree of use cases will open up when, when it, would become a com it would become commonplace to use more than one drone in one go. Right now, you can easily go to the shops and buy one drone and control that drone and get you know uh, feedback and videos from that drone but when it would become a commonplace i mean if it, if it becomes you know a common situation that you go to the shops and buy 10 drones with one remote control and you know all the all the software is already included where 10 drones will do one you know go and do you know one one set of work and things like that if that, if that becomes commonplace, there would be more things we'll discover that it can do. Because a lot of the task is easily, can easily be broke, broken down into smaller tasks. I mean, you know, if you think about, oh, I need to move this big, you know, big piece of, um, I don't know, a, a large set of bricks or, you know, build a house and, you know, it, but they are, they have smaller units like bricks and things like that. So. A drone can can lift and carry a brick. It can't, you know. Initially, you might think it can't build a house, but you know, if you break it down into smaller smaller pieces of task, and and even the cement that goes in between the bricks, drones can do that. I mean, it's it's not impossible at all. And um, if you break down any tasks, any any big task that you currently think, oh, this is not possible with a drone. But if you break it down into smaller pieces of work and have ten drones, you know, one by one doing something, it will it, it will get done. <laughs> so, um, and you, you think the things that require strength, for example, if you wanted to sort of, um, um, I don't know, sort of push something down to to create something, for example. Um, you know, when you when you are, I'm 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 keep I keep coming back to building a house because I don't know. It's just I I've seen I'll, a video. I'll, I'll, I'll give some other example. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I think you have seen this example. I mean, you talked about extinguishing fire using water. So you splash a, a big amount of water. A lot of drones they carry the water and they mm -hmm. splash it. Uh, over mm -hmm. a building or something that's on fire. Similarly, you can drop mm -hmm. a net. So the edges of the net, if it's a big net, which humans have to hold and then navigate through an area, what they can do is they can lie the whole net flat on a big piece of land and the drones lift the net and they take it forward and they drop it over an object, mm -hmm. animal or whatever, and they can drop a net like that. So yes, they. so I mean, the, the technical term for that is drone workers. So you have now mm -hmm. these workers, so you have worker robots, so robots who are doing work for you. And similarly, there are drones that are doing work for you, um, but they are working together like a family of ants. So ants mm -hmm. are very tiny, but their, the, their ability to carry weight with respect to the bo their body weight is incredible. And uh, ants can carry huge amounts of weight uh, and they can build and move lo big objects uh, even thousands of times bigger than their own size. Um, and they are very resourceful that way. So imagine if we can program a drone to now do the same thing as an ant, but not at the land level, but at a, at a height and then fly to a place and then do those things. So it's in, in, incredible. I mean, imagine if a drone is now sitting with someone in the village, um, they can do so many incredible things. They can monitor their crops, they can send letters, 
they can send uh, uh, supplies to the city they can uh, record videos they can they can check uh, what's happening in the nearby town they can uh, they, they can they can have a speaker attached to a drone and they can uh, send the drone to a nearby village and they can announce it on the mic and that speaker will then broadcast whatever sound they are whatever they are saying so I mean so many interesting applications and I think the remote applications are even much more uh, better than the application that we find in cities so suppose you want to go to a forest and you want to map the entire forest with a drone small in size with a laser scanner or something like that you can easily quickly scan the entire uh, topography of a forest because you can now fly so quickly um, suppose yes. there is a forest fire I was actually looking <coughs> at this application suppose there is a forest fire which has raised the ground completely everything is burned down and now you want to see what what, how to plant the trees where to plant the next trees and see what has been burned you can just send the drone flying over the whole forest and then you can capture mm -hmm. the image and, and then study okay where to plant you can actually drop seeds from the drone yes yes at, at precise spots that is so done. you don't have to send a human to drop those seeds especially when you have co covered something like a forest where it would take so much time and effort to take a seed uh, and drop it uh, in, say in thousands of kilometers with a drone with a swarm of drones and these drone mm -hmm. workers you can quickly send all the seeds drop it over the f of, uh, the bed of the forest and uh, let nature do its work yes absolutely I mean this is this, this that, that is the part where you know the use becomes use case becomes so much powerful when you when you have um, you know when when it is dangerous for humans to go and you have multiple drones doing uh, uh, achieving one task um yeah so but, uh, that's uh, uh yeah Anath, i think uh, what we need to be aware of is the uh, the limit of their size and the limit of their batteries because of the limitation of the batteries most drones don't last for more than 10 to 20 minutes and if it's a bigger size drone which uh, flies mostly it's in a glider shape and they use a spe specific type of fuel to power them um, so yeah I mean batteries are a big limitation and again uh, whoever cracks the battery cracks uh, the next uh, <laughs> uh, he they are they are the next billionaire or trillionaire so batteries I think a huge limitation for a drone right now yes yes absolutely I mean I have seen some drones which I I thought was a bit counterintuitive to to have I've seen some drones which actually are wired so so okay. uh, uh, <laughs> they, they have very long wires connected to them um these are these are where you being used for farming where you know there is a base station where it's connected to the wall but the benefit of being able to fly and do various things unmanned um, is so much that it, it they were they still opted for wiring to supply the power and the drone will go to the to the farmland around it and will will um, bring the ripe fruits that you know that it can find with its uh, camera um, image recognition technology it will find any fruits that are ripe and then bring it back to the base station so um, yeah I mean so just the ability to fly and go to any places is so much helpful that um, there, you know, the humans have created technology where it is even wired. So it didn't even need to fly to completely, you know, too far away, but it can still add so much value, but just being able to fly to any place in a, in a, in a given piece of land. So yeah, I mean, all the different different benefits of drones are to be looked at separately and see. You know, you can probably live, leverage each of the benefits in, in, in uh, by giving up some other, some other benefits, but you can still make, you know, a, a, you can still get enough output to 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 be able to want to use drones. Yes, yes, I think yeah, that's that's a that's a right thing to say because. Uh, if if you have no limitation of power, then the applications are limitless. Because um, <laughs> I mean, imagine what all the things you can do if you have unlimited supply of electricity, <laughs> uh, powering <laughs> your drones. Because that is that is incredible. And uh, I mean, when we talk about drones, 
and we talked about VR headsets that are used in in tan in tandem with drones, but and uh, drones are autonomous as well. So uh, some drones, as you rightly said, can be autonomous. They can be programmed to work autonomously. Plus, we can use cloud computing. So instead of sending all the data, whatever they are capturing, to a central server um, or your own server, you can send it to the cloud, say Amazon Web Server or some place like that. And and the the advantage is then you can use that to quickly share that information with anyone in anywhere in the world. So so you have so you have now combined so many topics, so technologies. So you have combined cloud technology, you have combined uh, autonomous flying, you have combined VR headset, uh, you have combined radio technology for communications, and you have combined a Raspberry Pi, which is nothing but a computer on a board. So it's it's incredible how much you can do with human ingenuity when we want to solve a problem. Yes, yes, and yeah, the more combination that happens, the better the the solution becomes. And uh, yeah, um, it, it's exciting. What are the next big things that are going to get combined and uh, you know increase? I mean, usually the abilities become exponential when when you can combine two different technologies. And and that's but, how uh, human uh, humans have uh, come up with various things, right? So we know of something, and then we built on top of that, and then we know of something yeah. else. We built on top of that, and then we decide to combine those two together and build something else with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's, it's like yeah. Lego blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely, it, absolutely. So so yeah, so I mean that's that's uh, the drones, and uh, I think it was quite useful for our uh, audience uh, who have been listening to us regularly uh, like uh, to understand uh, how a drone operates uh, what are the different applications and implications um, and other things yes yes absolutely i mean uh, it's um it's an interesting topic and it is one of the topics which has a lot of room for improvement uh, from design perspective, as well as many other, you know, use cases. Yeah, we've discussed many use cases today, but there could be so many other use cases that you haven't, you know, we haven't even thought of. But you know, if 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 our or you know audience look at their life and the things they've seen, and um, they can come up with newer use cases, which which will you know take the take the take the drone users even forward. And yeah, remember, drone is not necessarily just the the four fans taking um, taking off. Uh, anything that is unmanned and um, a drone also has an elaboration. I don't remember <laughs> what it is, but yeah. So it's um, you know battery as long as it's like you know battery operated, not you know unmanned vehicle. Um, you know it, it could be drones. You know it, it could say drone and mean a submarine which is not manned which is automated or even you know not flying but just moving on on land uh for example the um, the the spacecraft that we sent in on mars that's called a drone even though it's uh, you know um on mars land it's moving about so yeah i mean um it's interesting times interesting things are happening and um drones are making you know making a lot of it possible yeah and interesting you said about the nasa because the current mission from nasa perseverance uh, has a drone on board and this mm -hmm. is the first time a human aerial vehicle uh, will fly on a foreign planet in a, in yes. a in an atmosphere that is less dense than ours so it will be quite interesting to see how the aircraft takes off and lands and then what it sees when it flies because see if you if you send a robot which is going on the land you can only go as far and because you have so many obstacles of height size of different stones <coughs> mud different mm -hmm. density etc but if you have a drone that can fly you can cover a lot of area very quickly and you can survey a lot of area very quickly so i think that is a very absolute of a um, I mean, killer of a uh, application, mm -hmm. but I think uh, before we end, we I I I completely forgot. But we have to tell people that 
now there are regulations where you need to get a drone license a pilot license because without that you cannot fly a drone in your area so recently what has happened is people have tried to use drones near aircrafts to capture their aircrafts uh, near airports to capture aircrafts taking off uh, and landing and that what that has caused is that has caused the drones to actually have collisions with the aircrafts uh, getting stuck inside their engines oh and wow. uh, and because of that uh, they have now put very strict laws of the airspace in which you can operate drones plus remember drones have cameras so cameras are capturing video and you cannot capture someone else's video without their permission so there are data privacy mm -hmm. implications as well because if if you go outside and you start recording someone in the park well that's illegal you sh you have to take permission from them and they can actually uh, file a complaint against you and cops can take again uh, action against you because you are actually filming them illegally so so there are legal requirements now these days because they invade certain privacy um and uh, you also need to be able to operate the drone capable so that you don't crash it somewhere or you don't harm someone or you don't disturb someone so there are now pilot license requirements uh, in various countries there is a pilot license required in the uk um and then there is a pilot license required in the us i'm not sure about other countries but i'm pretty sure uh, that uh, they will also introduce those laws as uh, drones become more and more popular in their countries Yes, absolutely. That is that is an in, important uh, piece of information. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it, it can be a serious um, um, hindrance on privacy because, yeah, you, you could even, you know, you could have like, you know, it, 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 if someone wants to be a little bit nosier than they should, drones will certainly allow them to do that. And obviously, this that could become very quickly illegal. I mean, people with um you know not so good intentions could you know cause harm by collecting information that they shouldn't really be collecting um for example if if you know if if you have a drone flying you know just outside your window and you know seeing all the all the you know insides of the house and what valuables you have and things like that and then a burglar might be using that information to to decide which house is to burgle or not. I mean, there could be many things and, you know, what kind of security system are there, et cetera. So there could be many things. Um, yeah, and um, to be honest, any, with any new technology, there is a, always a question of privacy, isn't there? Like that would, um, and then it needs to be controlled, absolutely. Um, so the government now have, you know, put various things in place to, to control this. The pilot license is one of them. So yeah, I mean, um, not in not all countries have caught up with this, but you know, it definitely is something to keep in mind. That yeah, you know, you, you might be thinking all the uh, positive use cases, but there are negative use cases as well. So be mindful of other people are you know being negative, you know, using it negatively towards you or towards others, and um, just beware and also take necessary actions if you see something that is wrong. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, keep in mind and also keep with the technology. If you, if 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 you know, viewers and listeners, if one of you are thinking of of any of you are thinking about you know creating a career out of it, you know, as a drone pilot, then maybe you want to get the license as soon as it is available in in your country. Um, or if, if it is available, then yes, definitely do get the license and get the necessary qualification. I think nowadays there are training programs as well, and etc. So you get necessary qualifications and all kinds of things. So yeah, get all of those. That way you are a licensed and you know actually qualified person to to operate drones and all the power that it brings. Absolutely, absolutely. I I, I was uh, reading somewhere. I think I saw a video as well. Uh, that DJI they have launched a drone uh, a, a, in in such a size that you actually don't need a license to fly it because it's uh, of a particular size. So there are size restrictions. So based on the size of the drone, you need to decide uh, which license to get as well. So if it's below a certain size, then you don't need a license. So a lot of people who are drone racers, they create their own small drones that just last for mm. their batteries just last for 10 minutes, which are good, which is good enough for a race. And they replace the battery pack for the next race. Um, so for those cases, those use cases which are operated in an indoor 
enclosed environment controlled environment i think you won't need a drone license but if you carry a drone in your backpack to a different location where the the law suggests that you need a license then you need to definitely get a license to operate it um so yeah so th think about it the applications are very interesting and the uh, some people take very incredible videos with drones because now you can take videos from so many amazing angles that you cannot even think of you can take a spiral angle you can take a double helix loop uh, around a building mm -hmm. you can do so many crazy you can do a 360 do uh, 360 degree loop around a person um, and mm -hmm. previously you could not capture the whole body because you would see the camera ring but now with a drone you can mm -hmm. take the whole 360 degree view of a human or any other object um, mm -hmm. so it's it's incredible and uh, and i want uh, our audience to actually start experimenting with these technologies because it will help them to grow and understand the various things like radio, how radio works, how Raspberry Pi works, how the flight system or flight control software works. Remember, the, the software itself is open source. So you can quickly go. We will try to mention some uh, URLs where you can actually download a flight control software for drones and how to build a drone yourself. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, it's definitely a cool project to do. And so many things, uh, you know, you, you learn so many things doing it. So definitely encourage, encourage um, the audience to 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 do one of these. So that's it. Great. Yeah, yeah. No, we covered we covered a lot of um, you know aspects of drone. Um, it, I'll tell us the audience if you have, guys have any questions about this topic or any of the topics that we covered in few, uh, in the past. Um, reach out to us, ask us questions, and um, you know, tell us the future topics that you would like us to talk about. Um, yeah, this this. Um, uh, I, yeah. I just want to add. I just want to add something. So, uh, people who have been listening to us for this long, so first of all, uh, a big thanks from both of us. We are really uh, uh, happy to know that. Uh, you have been uh, listening to our talks and you find them useful and the whole idea behind a podcast is basically that uh, gives uh, give information in as simple way as possible and uh, help people understand these complex topics i mean we don't have to get inside how a microcontroller works that's i mean it's very difficult to explain that using just your voice so it's but it's easy for us to tell us okay you need a microcontroller and these are the applications now you can you can develop on that so so the whole idea for our podcast is to have a casual conversation about a topic that might interest people so yeah yes absolutely and yeah i mean as amit as you said like you know, we can't get into too much technical details with just our voice because you know we would need to probably demonstrate you know solve equations or demonstrate something physically you know that this is working like this way or things like that or some sort of visual animation things like that so for that uh, because of that in podcast we can only cover topics which you know we you know which is in uh, only to cover part of you know aspects of topics where we can just talk about it rather than going into details of the mechanics where we need to show some animation or solve the equation or um, give you, you know, so, some sort of mathematical problems, etc. So um, anything that we can talk about and explain very well, um, those are the topics that we usually go with. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, for the people who uh, listen to our podcast, uh, if you uh, go to our website, then you can actually see some links, uh, link tree links, which will take you to our YouTube channels where you can actually watch the video and the video has a lot of description links. So, so whatever we discuss uh, during our talk, we actually try to uh, back that up with some URLs and some things that which we feel would be useful to our audience uh, so you can actually get access to them as well it's very uh, important for us that you have access to those uh, information as well so th thank you again so much for uh, tuning in this week and listening to our podcast uh, you have been a great um, support for both of us and uh, we are we are really grateful thank you very much guys